All right, welcome back everybody to the SIG Podcast, Recruits Draftcast. As we mentioned earlier this week, our formula is changing a bit. We had uh, Adam Nightingale, the head coach of Michigan State, uh, earlier on Wednesday. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, please do yourself a favor. It was fantastic. Uh, and today, we are highlighting our prospects of the week. So that being our riser, our prospect of the week, and finally, our Habs prospect of the week. So let's get started. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. Recruits Draft Cast. And with the first overall selection in the 2023 NHL Draft, the Chicago Blackhawks are very proud to select from the Regina Pats, the Western Hockey League, Connor Bedard. The sickest NHL Draft and Scouting Podcast. It's going to be sick. That's right. I am your host, producer Shane, joined by the fantastic Grant McCagg. Grant, hasn't been too long since we've seen each other, right? But how you doing? Oh, you know, we we have our little disputes here every now and then, but I, we move on and uh, life's good. I, uh, right on. I, uh, I I like being called fantastic. I think that's, uh, that that's, I mean, that's fantastic. So I appreciate you, uh, you doing this again. You're, you've had a busy day, Shane, and so have I. So uh, just one of those days, right? But uh, we tried, John, and let's get at her. Fantastic indeed. And let's get at her. That's right. Um, we'll start with sleeper of the week, right? This, this is a prospect that maybe not enough people are talking about that maybe more people should be talking about. And we'd like to highlight uh, a prospect by the name of Raoul Boyard this week. If we can pull up some clips, that would be great. There we go. Yeah, he's a 6'2 center out of uh, Bay Como who's been uh, he's been quite impressive in, in recent weeks. Um, I didn't really get a good look at him. Uh, he was kind of off my radar going into the year, but um, he's putting up really good point totals. He's in and about a, a point per game. Um, as a 17-year-old playing in, in the queue, that, that's pretty impressive. You, you always like that size, you know. Uh, the size skating is very attractive. And as you can see in these uh, these clips, he's pretty smooth. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, like, a, you'll also see in a couple of clips where he mishandles the puck a little bit. But, oh, there's Recovers. a double. Yeah. We get to see always that twice. <laughs> yeah. But he... Um, uh, he's got good puck protection skills. He's, um, I think his brother plays on the team as well. So, I, I, you know, it's a hockey family. Um, but he's a, he's a good playmaker and he's scoring some goals. Um, what, <clears throat> what may end up hurting him is that he rarely throws a hit. Now, mm. um, there's good and bad with being a 6'2 prospect. The good is that scouts, you know, love to – Obviously, prefer size, right? But he, uh, when you're six two, you're expected to use that size. Yeah. Now that may be what keeps him out of the top fifty, but certainly just based on his production, on his, um, you know, size skating combo, which which scouts love, uh, you, you would think that he'd be a top fifty pick, and so it'll be interesting come draft. If he can maybe pick up his physical play a little bit, yeah. um, I mean, he he can go like a five game stretch without without uh, throwing a hit. So um, I I would uh, I would like to see him use that size a little more often. Just I mean, at the NHL level, you uh, you have to compete. You got to be you know to go to the physical areas. You have to take a hit, throw a hit. Um, that's the one part of his game where there's concerns. And unfortunately, that can be the difference between being a top 50 pick and, and sliding sometimes into the even the fourth round, uh, right. even if you put up a point a game. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what how he plays down the stretch. And if, at, especially at playoff time, we'll, the scouts will have a really close look at him because you want to you see uh, – 
that he can handle the physical part of the game at, at playoff time in the queue. I mean, if exactly. he can't do it in the queue, he's not going to do it in the NHL, right? So um, an intriguing prospect who is uh, who has climbed my ranking somewhat, and uh, we've got him in a really good, nice place. And if he if he can expand his uh, his physical part of the game a bit, he could he could end up being a top fifty pick. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's good stuff. Uh, you know, you got to show the compete level, but at least the um, the offensive upside is very is very much there. Uh, so Raoul Boyard is our sleeper slash riser of the week. Bit of both, right? Uh, rising up your list, but he's also not being mentioned too not too much. So uh, good to highlight him here. So prospect of the week, uh, we've talked about him before, and I'm sure we're going to talk about him again. That belongs to Mr. Trevor Connolly, who had himself one hell of a game. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's, well, it's not often that we have uh, somebody uh, deemed the prospect of the week two weeks in a row. But mm -hmm. last week when you uh, you're fill in there, uh, Rocco, he was uh, Conley was co prospect of the week, and yep. this year we gave it to him. Uh, we we gave it to him outright. Um, right. Want to uh, thank uh, Instat didn't download this game for some reason, so I uh, wasn't able to get the clip off of Instat. But Ryan Sykes uh, want to thank him for uh, uh, tweeting this. And we're we're using his uh, his tweet, so uh, he he made a nice. Uh, these are the four goals that he scored in the bronze medal game wow. against Sweden. He was uh, he was lights out good. Now I already had him in my top ten, and uh, it's games like that where you uh, you know you start to consider that hey maybe this kid's uh, even top five now. Mm. Um, Blaine Potvin did a nice. Uh, he he's a scout for recruits that's based out of Halifax, and he went to the tournament and uh, watched uh, in Truro, so not too far away. Uh, he he went to the tournament and and saw three of his games, and he he's you know he said in his report that he thinks probably mid to late first round, but I don't know. What do you think, Shane? <laughs> I've been a fan of his since the yes, uh, yeah. Olympic Gretzky. I like he real no, he really stood out to me big time there. So I've I've been keeping a, an eye on him and, and seeing the four goal game. I'll be honest, it's not a surprise. I I like we know by now that he has it in him. Um and yeah. like yeah, I don't know. The, the 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 upside is very much there. Uh I there's well, not much to hate in his game, and that's that's what you want out of a high level prospect, right? Right. Well, I mean, I, I've always like thought of him more as a of a uh, playmaker than a finisher. But mm -hmm. wow, I mean, in this tournament, and here's Hello. the Michigan. There's the Michigan. Like, My what a way to top it off, right? Uh, I mean, there was a goal earlier in the tournament where he batted it out, uh, you know, off off the blade of his stick into the top of the net, which. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen quite like that before. And then just to top it off to say, oh, yeah, you know, just to remind them just how good his eye hand is. Look at that one. Oh, I know they could almost have called that high sticking. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Is, dick is the rule like the hands where you hold the, the stick have to be below? I, I forget what the rule is. It's like you need to keep the puck below. The crossbar or is it the hands? Forget. I uh, I think it's like the you know your uh, your stick has to be below the crossbar or below your shoulders or I don't know the exact rule either, but it and I think you know uh, like just about any time it's anywhere close to the shoulder where you tip a tip a puck they they call it high sticking, mm, but yeah. Um, when it's Michigan and it's a goal like that, I think they give them a little leeway, you know. Uh, you know what? I like that. I like that. It's yes. such a spectacular play that they just like. If if that would have been if his stick had been there on a tip goal, they call it high sticking. But since he, yeah. he did it on the Michigan, they would probably boo the refs out of the rink. So they okay, well we we'll, I would we'll, too. <laughs> we'll let that. One, I would too. We'll allow that one. Yeah. 
So that's it, uh, you yeah. know, there, these kinds of moves are becoming more and more common, but it's always entertaining. It's always like, wow, like that, yeah. that is, that is so hard to do doing it at that speed at that level. Uh, you know, you, you imagine just calling a high stick on that. That's terrible. You can't yeah. do it. So uh, well, Trevor exactly. Connolly, man. Wow. He's, well, he's way, putting on a show. What a way to end your tournament, you know, just, just yeah. to put a kind of a stamp on it, you know. Um, I mean, Michigan goals don't, I don't, you know, I don't raise a, a prospect on my list when he scores no. a Michigan goal, but no, I mean, of not. if anything, it's, it's a, yeah. it, it's a bit of a hot dog thing and you, you almost, eh, you know, but <laughs> I mean, he, he can do it. Like, I know I can, mm -hmm. I, I know I could not that <laughs> I've ever tried, but yeah, I well, would not. Yeah, no. I, I, you know, if I had stick them on my stick, maybe I could get the puck to stick to it and, you know, yeah. do something like that. Like the old Flying Fathers. I don't know if you ever, that used to be a, a, a group of uh, fathers and some of them were in the priesthood that it was kind of like the Harlem Globetrotters of, of hockey, right? They would travel around and play against local uh, men's teams and that, you know, they put a nylon on the stick and with the puck, on the nylon and the guy go through everybody and you know i'd need a nylon on my stick to to pull off the michigan but uh, i need, yeah. I'd probably <laughs> need to no that's it it's it, yeah. th just the fact that you know he was able to have a four goal game in, in an elimination game a metal game at that um that's that's no small feat so trevor Connolly, well deserving of a title of prospect of the week this week now for you Habs fans watching all right, we got you covered as always. Habs prospect of the week is the most recent fifth overall selection, David Reinbacker, who has been benefiting from a coaching change, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, he's dialed back his minutes, probably four minutes a game. And I think that was a good idea because, mm -hmm. you know, you're an 18 year old kid playing against men and it's, it's tough playing 21 minutes a game, you know? Um, but since the new coach has come in, he's uh, he's changed up his D partners. He's actually, I think last game he played on the second unit. They don't have him first power play, first PK, and, you know, first unit all the time like they were before. And I think it's benefited his game. Um, here we see uh, three of his uh, – in his last four games, he has three, three points, mm -hmm. which is good production, you know. Um, he, he had gone, I think, one stretch where he went something like a dozen games without a point. So he's uh, th that's encouraging that he's um, he's providing a little more offense. But we see in these clips, this is just from his last couple of games, just a few notable uh, things that I saw. Um, defending well, like here, he keeps him, you know, he's really got a, a – he's really excellent one-on-one -on -one defending and he keeps – Keeps guys to the outside for the most part. Um, I love his uh, his physical game has picked up as the season's gone along, and part of that too, I think, is just not playing too much. You know, being tired out there and having a little more endurance, a little more strength, because you're not uh, being overplayed. But uh, in those four games with the three points, Cloten has given up 16 goals, and um, reinbacher has been on the ice for one goal against. So wow. we saw a little stretch there uh, about a month ago after he just returned from injury where he was on, you know, two goals against, three goals against, uh, two goals against. There was a little stretch there. And, of course, all you know, the guys come out of the woodwork that, that want to uh, uh, dwell on the negative. And, and we saw posts on Twitter of, his goals, you know, the mistakes that he made in those two or three games. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's easy to cherry pick like that, right? And, and uh, oh, well, must be a bad pick if he made two or three mistakes in a game. Well, he's a he's an 18-year-old. Look at him directing the play, too. Eh? I like that. Yeah. Um, he's an 18-year-old kid playing the men's league and a good one. There's going to be There's going to be hiccups, you know, every now and then. But... Here was that nice pass that he made. Uh, that was the the first assist that he, that he had 
going back the last four games. But uh, I uh, I like the progress that he's made under the new coach. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he's not uh, he's not playing 21 minutes a game. And I think it might have just been too much for him. You got to build. When you're a teenager, you got to build your strength and endurance. Um, mm -hmm. And playing in a men's league, 21 minutes a game at, at 18, I think it might have been asking a little too much of him. And when you, you, you know as well as I, when you're mentally tired, you tend to make more mistakes, right? So physically tired, sorry, you make more mental mistakes. And I think that was creeping into his game a little bit. Haven't seen it in the last four games. I mean, oh, playing, still playing 17 to 18 minutes a game and only on the ice for one of 16 goals against that your team allows. That's a pretty good indication that that he's uh, he's playing a sound sound defensive game now, and yeah. um, I, I'm I'm looking at that. I was surprised that he didn't play for Austria at the at the World Juniors that it's they just awful. had. Uh, he was expected to go. Now he was just back from an injury, and I you know I wish I had the whole uh, um, story on that whether he didn't go because they were uh, concerned that he, they wanted him to rest. And, and uh, you know, I think it might've been a knee injury that he had. Now, I think they only played one game during that tournament. I might be wrong. It may have been two, but it's not like he was going to miss a whole pile of games. If he did go yeah. to the world, Ju uh, world junior division one for Austria, um, I suspect that he wanted to, but I don't know the story on that. But just reading the tea leaves, um, with him not playing for Austria at the uh, at the World Junior Division One, with him missing games already this year, and him probably only going to play thirty to forty, maybe, for Cloten. Uh, and then with them being like 12th place and probably going to miss the playoffs altogether. So he'd be out. I think, you know, they're done by April. Um, like in speaking with the Canadians, there's, well, you know, he might play for Austria at the world championships. Well, um, I have a feeling because he, he'll have played so few games this year and because he's already not played with Austria in one event, I think that he's going to come over when his season ends in, in Cloten and get more, uh, play more games, you know? Yeah. I, I, I think he will, he will join Laval at season's end and okay. uh, be on the blue line. I just did, because to play 30, 40 games this year, it, maybe it'll be a little more than that, but I don't think so. That's not a, that's not a pile of hockey. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think he, he won't want to sit for eight weeks or whatever. It'll be six to eight weeks without playing and then go to the world championships. Um, I think I'd be surprised if he does not come over at the end of his season and, um, sign, you know, sign with, well, he's signed with the Canadians, but go to Laval and, uh, and play the rest of the season there and hopefully help them get into the playoffs. I, we've seen, uh, we've seen Laval start to come on a bit, you know, yeah. it's Tough funny when I, when I talk to um, like a lot of people talking about how disappointing it is Laval, the start to Laval season. Um, when I talk to uh, J, uh, JF Uhl in the uh, summertime at the mm -hmm. development camp, he said he came right out and said, "Look, I because they had so many young players um, that there might be some growing pains." And he he you know he predicted at that point we'll probably start out slow, but look look for us to just get better and better as the year goes on as all yeah. this young talent adapts. It's not easy, you know. Mm -hmm. Jumping into the AHL, it's a better league than a lot of people give it credit for. And, yeah. uh, you know, he he expected 
there to be a slow start for the team, uh, even without all the injuries. I mean, and they've had a lot, yeah. And, and po- like both Montreal and Laval, right? That's it. Like That's how it. many defensemen uh, had to be called up? There was, you know, there's been three or four defensemen injured in Montreal. So you call up guys, everyone goes up two spots in Laval. And then at one point, geez, what they still have Leas Anderson out, who was 30 some goal scorer last year that was being counted on to be their probably their top goal scorer this year. Mm-hmm. He's been out most of the year. Then at one point, oh, there, yeah. yeah, two or three weeks ago, they had about five or six guys out that were, you know, supposed to be top nine guys and then all the injuries and stuff. So there, there's reasons why. Oh, they, yeah. They've had a slow start, but I think Laval will get back in the uh, playoff uh, hunt. It's still early in the year. Uh, I think they're going to just get better as the season goes along and as they get healthier too and all the mm-hmm. rookies adapt. So, uh, you know, hopefully for their sake and Reinbacher's, they're in the playoff hunt um, when his season ends in Cloton and he gets over. Plus the fact, you know, Colton's not a very good team, you know. Yeah. Um, I like to get him playing in in a in a playoff atmosphere type uh, this season at some point. So mm-hmm. let's let's hope that they get back in the playoff picture. And I'm I'd be surprised if we don't see Reinbacher in North America come spring. I'd love that. I'd love that. And you know, he'd start he'd start the adaption process of um playing on a smaller ice rink right in, in over in Europe right the the ice is much larger so if if he can start progressively getting eased into playing on a smaller ice rink you know that's that can only be beneficial for his development so I'm I'd, I'd be all for that I think that'd be that'd be awesome and <laughs> Lord knows Laval could use him uh they you know <laughs> anything they can anything they can get to to get back on track right you said they, they started winning a few games here but uh, there's there's a, a lot of catching up to do because oof it was rough for a while there but that yeah. that is to be expected like you mentioned. Um, well, that, the one good yeah. thing, sorry, um, the the one good thing about that too is that the five the top five teams make the playoffs mm-hmm. in the division, so it's uh, a little easier to get into the playoffs in the AHL than the NHL. So. You know they're not out of it yet, but yeah, yeah, they look. You know they're in last place in the in the division, so obviously they got to climb up. But it's not an impossible task. We just they have to do the opposite of what they did the first twenty five games. You know, in the next exactly. twenty five, and and then they'll be right in the hunt. So hopefully, hopefully they can climb back in there because uh, the Laval fan base is great, and they'd love mm-hmm. uh, nothing they'd love more than a winner. That's for sure. Yeah, no, that's it. That'd be awesome. I love that. So, um, David Reinbacker, Habs prospect of the week, guys. The World Junior Championship is at our doorstep. All right, I, I can I can smell it. I can already hear the jingle uh, from TSN here. I'm 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 pumped up. I know Grant, you are too. Um, we had we had Rocco on to cover the World Juniors last week, but we're gonna cover it as as the tournament goes on. Don't worry about that. Um, and we wish you all happy holidays. All right. Oh, oh you had something? Um, we're having Andre Tournier on next uh, week. We should probably mention that. I wanted to World let you tease that, but uh, if if you if you want to break the news, go right ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he he said he'd be on, and Andre's yeah. a man of his word. So uh, I think December twenty eighth, which is next Thursday, we're gonna do an interview with Andre. And of course, you know, Andre was part of the Hockey Canada. It seemed like every year when he was a junior coach, he was uh, yeah, either coaching the U18s or coaching the U20s, be it head coach or assistant coach. Um, nobody, uh, I don't think there's a better guest that we could have on to talk mm. uh, World Juniors than, than Andre. So I'm really looking forward to that next week. So am I. That, that is one heck of a hockey mind right there. And he he is a he he will forever be a legend in in hockey Canada uh, for what he did for the World Juniors and 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 everything beyond. 
Uh, so very excited for that. Stay tuned next week. But until then, we thank you all for tuning in, guys. Um, you know, the, as, as 2023 comes to an end soon, uh, we, we're very thankful that this channel, first of all, was created, right? The Sick Podcast, the Sick Family uh, allowed us to do this. Uh, it's been a lot of fun yeah. and, and it's going to keep going. Um, you know, 2024 is even going to be is going to be even better. But for now, the World Juniors, man, I'm 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 pumped about this. It's going to be a heck of a tournament. And you know what? We wish you all happy and safe holidays. I hope you are all happy and 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 get all the love and presents that you may want, and and stuff your face with food because I know I will, um, <laughs> and watch a whole lot of hockey because that's what it's all about, baby. Uh, Grant, any parting words before we uh, say goodbye? Well said, Shane, and uh, Merry Christmas to you and your family. To you as well, Grant. And don't forget, obviously, go check out recruits.ca. Come on, guys. This is an extension of the website. You don't want to miss the stuff that goes on there. All the draft, uh, draft analysis, Habs analysis, anything you can think of, do yourself a favor and go check it out. Thank you all for tuning in again, and we will see you very soon. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast Recruits Draftcast on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.